Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the M44, the Tier 6 American SPG. This one's located on the eastbourne of Sand River and is under the command of Zin 1983. Game started. Well, as most of you probably know by now, the M44 has been pretty savagely nerfed by wargaming. They've adjusted the uh, amount of time it takes to reload and they take taken other measures to reduce the alpha and basically to detune it and make it uh, nowhere near as efficient as it used to be. Most of that has been happened simply because enemy, uh, well not enemy, uh, Unicum players and other players have been complaining that it's the M44 which always seems to be hitting them and damaging them. And consequently, they've complained and whined to Wargaming, saying, can you play, please nerf this RT or take it out of the game? And Wargaming has finally acceded to their demands and ruined one of the best RTs in the game. That's a direct hit on a VK2801. Now, the RT that uh, you're seeing at the moment is the M44 after the nerf, um, being played by Zin1983. It now has a DPM of only 1,158.89 hit points per minute, so much reduced from the 1,422 hit points that it used to do before the nerf. So it's, they've taken about 300 hit points off per minute. That's an awful lot. That's a hell of a lot. You've reduced the, uh, the alpha of some of the uh, heavy tanks most heavily played in the game and said okay we're going to take a hundred hit points off your alpha and it's going to drop your uh, dpm massively i think a lot of tank players would actually complain bitterly that they were losing the capability to play the game now zin did this uh, this replay to try and check and see has the m44 lost its magic can it still produce good results? Well, Zin's an expert player, so he, he does play the M44 fair mid, and he knows how to use it. He's got the uh, gun lane drive rammer, good crew with the uh, brubs and arms, and uh, so he's playing it as the best he can to get the best result. He's focusing south of the river at the moment because most of the enemy tanks seem to be showing up in that direction. But he's noticed a few enemy tanks have turned up in the riverbed. Now he can get the most damage off these guys if they're in sight of his teammates. So then he gets a stun assist and fires around in. Unfortunately, uh, he comes off the camera sometimes a little too soon. So we don't see what actually happens to the shell. I may have to start controlling that myself to ensure that we do get to see what happens to the shell but anyway with this is a test really and i will be doing a quick comparison at the end so you can actually see what difference they've actually made well it looks like somebody fired around at that enemy tank uh, and it, i don't think that zin actually got an impact i think it just zipped past him Going back to the other end of the map, on the west side we've got an O-Fry, one of those new Italian tank destroyers, and oh, he did it again, he quickly fired before we could get to see what happened to the shell. Control that. So from now on, we'll control the camera so he won't take it away. Okay, that S, is it SVV? is about to get struck rounds out yes he did hit him he got a direct hit there you see that's information he would have missed because it was unsighted he wouldn't have learned that he actually did get a direct hit uh, because there would have been no readout to say yep there was uh, any impact the only way you get to learn that is by actually seeing the shell strike the target or strike something and just disappear Take control of the camera again. E25 rounds out. That's a clean miss. 
E25 did move away just before he fired. And so, yep, he didn't get that one. Meanwhile, the enemy is still trying to make their way up the riverbed, and we've got a Skoda T50. It's then trying to line him up for a leading shot. Yep, that one worked. Yep. 210 with 476 of stun assist. So it does appear that it is working as intended when it's doing damage, but it's not generating as much as it used to before. Okay, that guy's down. Now he might try. Okay, he's going to probably try and fire. Rounds out. Yep, that's a direct hit. But no damage. Just a critical hit. That's all we've got. Okay, he's flipped back down to the rib bed again just to have a quick check. Otty players will quickly scan where they've seen the enemy uh, playing around just in case they can get something. You also try and pre-aim on targets if you can. You can spot them. Okay, he knows there's no eye there. He's working on the basis it's still there. It is still there. He's just been tracked. Rounds out. Yeah, that, that time he did do damage. And he got the stun assist when he was wiped out. So that one worked. Now at the moment, we're halfway through the battle. He's earned 821 hit points of actual damage. 769 of stun assist well he fired that one off before i got a chance to uh, control the camera it looks like he managed to get the shell fairly close but uh, we won't know if he actually did hit that one now because uh, unless i re uh, rewind the camera and have another look he fires yep that's it Definitely a hit. No doubt about that one whatsoever. Now, if we look at the hit point count at the moment, we can see that we're up by 1,049. So, Zin's team is winning. They have more hit points, but that means there's more damage they can still do. Rounds out. And another direct hit. 240. Now... The M44 used to be doing about half of the uh, alpha on just average hits. And so that would be around the 275 mark, 280. Because, of course, the alpha is 550. Okay, he's going to have another go at that SV or SMV. Just trying to adjust. Rounds out. Where well, it was, it actually zipped to the left he, it, i thought it was going to run short but he did actually get some damage out of it the santo can he get a shot in yep again he did get a hit and got 187 splash he's changing position again he hasn't been counter-batteried yet, but it does actually help if you just move about a little bit every now and then to stop the enemy from uh, getting any uh, inkling of where you might be. If the tracer changes position, then they might not be able to guess. Now, he's the only RT on his team in this game, by the way. So he's expected to carry the load as the RT player to try and help his teammates win. That, that landed short. It did splash. He got something out of it. 105. Oh, enemy tank close by. Now, is he going to pay attention to that Basanto? I think there's two Basantos. There's one north of the, the rib bed. He's trying to follow this one. Well, that one got wiped out before our shell arrived. The Borsig got him. And it looks like the one north of the riverbed has already been killed. The King Tiger is trying to come out the riverbed. But I think he's about to meet a Tiger 1 and a BK-2801. And I think they're probably going to have uh, a few words with him. Now. Fires a, a blind shot in. 
speculative. The enemy King Tiger has been taken out, so he's now free to move about. There's only four enemies left. He's now managed to get up to one and a half thousand hit points, and there's only five minutes left. So he's actually done rather well in the last three minutes to generate almost twice as much damage as he did before. And I think most of that came from hitting those Italian tank destroyers at the other end of the map. Oh, two quick kills. And that leaves just the box tank and the enemy M44 at the other end of the map. We'll have a look and see how much damage he did in that game. There's the box tank. Oh, he did get a nice one there. 28 hit points, but he managed to force the guy back into the corner. And now he's vulnerable. And our T103 is moving in for the kill. Now he's got a 13 centimeter gun, just like the box tank. And wait for it. There you go. <laughs> That was inevitable. And that's it. That's the game. Here's the end of battle results. And that was a first class tank of a Zin 1983 in the M44 post nerf. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 12 in that game. And he also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. So at least that shows... His technique has not gone wrong. He is still hitting a lot of the enemy, making maximum use of the shell loading time. So he's re-aiming onto a new target, a fresh target. The moment his shell's ready, he's sending it out to do the most damage and getting ready again for the next shell after that. His win rate from the battle, 3,126, which is super unicum standard. So can't knock his technique at all. He is dead generating damage and... Yes, because the win 8 is dependent on actual damage. Let's have a look at Team Scott. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. In fact, that went to the T-103, who managed to get a high caliber, top gun, patrol duty, and steel wall in that game. Nice selection of medals. Look at his win 8, 6,506. So he'll be a very happy bunny uh, at the end of that game, because, uh, yeah, that game was very much worthwhile for him. Uh, the second highest damage turned out to be the Shrek, who got 3,139. I know some people call it Sputnik. I think it's better as a Shrek. It is ugly. Uh, and the third highest damage turns out to be, yep, Zin 1983 in the M44. So he hasn't lost it all, but it's still been massively depleted. You won't be, it'd be difficult for you to earn Gore's medals with the M44 now, simply because of the reduction in the DPM. If we look at the number of kills, we can see that the highest number turned out to be the T-103. He managed to get seven kills, one short of getting a Radley's, uh, but he did pick up that top gun. Uh, four kills went to the Shrek, and two kills went to this is one of the Italian um, autoloader um, tank destroyers. Unfortunately, it's not showing up as the actual type, so I think probably the Bipera or the, the VVCs or whatever they are called. Uh, but it will come in, we'll, we'll know what these uh, question marks are when the figures have been uploaded to the computer. So they do a, a download of the, um, uh, the types of vehicle available in the game and eventually they'll, they will appear. But we can see uh, that uh, Zinn didn't get any kills at all in the game, but that actually did help him to get the Confederate. He wouldn't have got it if he, uh, or might not have got it if he actually had got a kill. And when it came to base XP, we can see he's actually third on the table. But the top scorer was the T-103, 1,631. So he did very well in that game. 977 went to the Shrek and 904 went to Zin. So he was third on XP and he was in the top players on his team. He fired 23 rounds in that game. Got seven direct hits on the enemy, but no penetrations at all. 21 splash, damage of 2,035 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, didn't get any kills. Um, so yes, he did very well, actually, because he hit 10 separate uh, tanks. And some of them he hit more than once, in fact, quite a few times. But he managed to spread the RT love all around the map so that enough people got hit so he got himself a medal. 769 hit points of stun assist off 19 stuns. And if you wonder why I'm uh, concentrating, or rather, uh, um, I think it's a good idea to get a Confederate medal, it means that if you do lose the game, at least you're going to get the, uh, the, the credits and the XP 
for putting your effort in. That's why it's a, always a good idea to get a medal, especially if it's a Confederate one. 44,691 credits for the battle, 22,346 from personal reserves, 67,037 credits altogether. And after ammunition resupply, he took away a profit of 55,422 credits. So it is still generating credits on a premium count, and he would have made credits on a free-to-play account. Now, as many of you know, Quickie Baby did actually feature the M44 as one of the best credit-earning um, non-premium vehicles. Uh, and, of course, we can see from this that, yes, it is still capable of generating credits, but only if you're a really good arty player. And I think most tank players are not that good at arty. Uh, I'm afraid I've experienced that, uh, yes, they tend to be a little less good than the people who play it a lot, uh, obviously. 1,356 XP for the battle, 2,712 for mission completion, and 4,068 experience points altogether. So, uh, instead of actually going in to have a quick look at the armour and the modules, which I think you, most of you know about anyway, this time round we're actually going to be doing the, um, or having a look at the comparisons of the M44 for the stock gun and the top gun. So I'm going to go to this page. Okay, this is the stock gun comparison now post nerf. So we can see that uh, starting with the AMX 13 F3, they've got a DPM of 1117, and that's the same as the M44. So Wargaming have actually decided to nerf the um, uh, the M44 down to the AMX 13 F3 as far as the stock gun. But you remember, the stock gun for the AMX 13 F3 is a lot smaller, and that means that this, uh, that makes that tank quite fast, and its reload time is also comparable. You can see the reload time for the AMX 13 F3, 26.85 seconds, same as on the M44. So maybe that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to match the M44 to the AMX 13 F3. But I think you'll notice that there's two arties that haven't been nerfed at all. One of them's the FE 304, which of course has got the fast firing 25 pounder in the stock gun. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, alpha, it's uh, DPM is 1,968.81. So it's by far the best out of all the stock guns at tier six. The only problem is you have to get really close to the enemy if you want to get some damage. And because the penetration is only 22 millimeters, most of the tanks you'll be firing at, even at tier six, you'll have difficulty getting hits on them and penetrating them. Unless, of course, you hit the top armor of, say, a tier four or a tier five, you might still be able to penetrate those. If you fire at a tier six, you probably won't penetrate them. It does have a very fast fire rate, though, 7.03 seconds. That's the standard, or it's 8.53. That's the rate of fire. 8.53 is the reload time. So you can see that does reload very, very quickly, but that's because the gun's a lot smaller. It's not a heavy shell. And um, so, yes, it does reload fast, almost as quick as the Fifi, the 105 Lef H18B2, uh, but it does have that drawback of having to get close to the enemy, and that makes you very vulnerable. If the enemy can find you, they can probably take you out fairly quickly because you're going to have to be near the target to get good shots on them. So the other tank that's really good, uh, other RT that's really good to six on stock gun is the SU-8. Now remember, this is the 122 millimeter gun, not the 152, that's the top gun. And in this one, we've got a penetration of 30 millimeters, which is a little less than the M44 gun. And this gun, by the way, is the same gun as on the M41 HMC, the tier five American RT. Uh, this gun here is the 122 millimeter. It's not quite as powerful as the 152, only 30 millimeters of pen, but it does have a 500 alpha, which puts it alongside the M44 on damage. But look at the reload time: 17.26 seconds for the SU-8 and 26 seconds for the M44, which means you can get three and a half rounds out on the SU-8 for only 2.2 rounds on the M44. So this thing's got a fast fire rate and with all the extras such as the crew training, uh, the rammer, 
uh, and everything else, you might be able to drop the reload time down to about 15 seconds, which is about the reload time that uh, we used to have with the M44 in the past. But of course, with that RT, we were doing 550 alpha every time we hit the enemy. Because this has got lower penetration, it's probably not going to pen the enemy and do quite as much, but it might still get 250 alpha. So I think we might see a lot of players giving up the M44 and going to either the SU-8 um, instead with either the stock gun or the top gun. Anyway, the one of the benefits of being in the M44 is the reload, um, or the ammo rather. Uh, you can see that the FB304 is never going to run out of ammunition with 110 rounds, but the M44 does actually have 44 rounds. Now, it's quite possible on the AMX-13 F3, the, um, the Hummel, and also the SU-8 of actually running out of ammo with the stock gun. Uh, different story when it comes to the top gun. I'll, I'll show you that in a sec. But you can see the potential damage is still the FB304 with the most potential. And the second highest potential is the M44. And you can see these other ones have got less potential damage simply because they've got fewer rounds in their ammo capacity. So the next thing to do is have a quick look at the top guns because this is where it gets really interesting to, to see which one is still the best to go to. Well, the FV304 is still the top dog when it comes to damage, but as I said, you have to get close to the enemy to do that damage. Only 28 millimeters of pen, but the FV304 does get pens. Uh, as I said, tier four, tier five tanks, it's gonna pen those. You might have difficulty with the tier six. But you can see the rate of fire is still very, very high. Reload time is slightly it's slightly longer with the top gun, which of course, as you know, is the 4.5 inch howitzer. That works out at about 115 millimeters. You can see there, 114.3. And the fire rate is 4.64. So it's actually dropped the fire rate from the previous one. I think you can see seven rounds a minute with the with the 25 pounder gun. But now it's gone up to 4.64, down to 4.64, because you've got this longer reload. So you're more vulnerable. You're pumping out less rounds per minute, uh, but you've still got uh, a very high potential compared to the other enemy, uh, other RT. And you can see here that it's still got the highest potential overall for the amount of ammo. The ammo's dropped to 75 rounds, but you can still use most of those in... Um, and probably not run out in a 15 minute battle. 33,750 potential, it's still got a lot, but chances are you won't penetrate every round, in which case, despite the fact that that's the potential damage, you won't be doing that sort of level. But we can see that the SU-8, once it's actually got that 152 millimeter howitzer, does make a big difference. Suddenly it's bossing it as the second highest damage of all the tier six RTs, because now it's gone up to 1,678, whereas on the previous one, it was actually 1,738. It was more damage on the previous one with a faster reload, 17.26 seconds. Now it's gone up to 19.65, but you should be able to drop that down to about 16 seconds or 17 seconds per reload. But the alpha is better, 550. The previous alpha was only 500, comparable to the M44, but the M44 is now only 500, whilst the SU-8 is 550 with the 152mm gun. So the SU-8 is now definitely better than the M44, and with that sort of reload, it should be able to pump out the rounds, just like the M44 used to be able to do, and also get significant damage with 38mm of pen, you should be able to go through tier six tanks with that. You might struggle with tier sevens, maybe, or even a tier eight if you actually get into a tier eight game. But uh, you should be able to pen easily any tier four, tier five, and possibly tier six uh, opponents. Now, 26 rounds is not really enough. The M44 has dropped from 44 rounds to 36. Um, so it's still better than the... SU-8 when it comes to ammo, but uh, remember the SU-8 has got a much better chance of penning the enemy with that extra uh, uh, pen from the 122mm. Of course the M44 has still got good pen, but if you do pen the enemy you're only going to get 500. Now in this game that we've just seen, 
Zinn did manage to penetrate enemy tanks, and his average shot was getting about 232, 60 hit points per shot. So he was still doing rather well, but it was obviously um, a non-penetrating round um, was actually still getting him. And I think if we go back to that again, we can see that um, he didn't pen any enemy tanks whatsoever in that game. So he was relying on half the alpha, about 250 per shot, to actually make the damage of 2,035. If we go back to this comparison, we can see that uh, uh, although it's got the ammo cap cap capability, reducing the alpha is going to reduce overall what you can do in a game. And the SU-8 does look slightly better now than the M44 when it comes to actually damage on the enemy. The only problem with the SU-8 again is that it actually has a fairly narrow arc of fire. Um, it's actually um, only 17 degrees of arc, 5 degrees one way, 12 degrees the other. Um, it is a reasonably fast RT, 60, is it 60 kilometers? No, it's um, 48 kilometers an hour, which is slightly slower than the M44, but it's still a very capable RT based on the T28 tank. And uh, with that 152 millimeter howitzer, obviously you get stun as well. Um, I find that the SU-8 does dial in fairly quickly on targets simply because it's got that very narrow arc. But uh, so the SU-8 might make a, a good alternative to the M44 if you're looking for something different. Uh, obviously, I advise people if you're going to play with the Hummel, play with the stock gun because the stock gun's much more accurate than the uh, um, than the top gun. Uh, if we show here the top gun, you can see it does do a lot of damage compared to the top stock gun, which is only 1,137. But look at the reload time for the stock guns, 25.31. That can be reduced to about 20 seconds. This reload is 29.82, so it's very long. And you're only going to get that down to about 25 to 27 seconds. So yes, the stock gun does make sense because it does a lot of damage. It's very accurate and it's got a fast reload. So yes, the M44 can still make damage, but it's... Not quite as good as the SU-8. I would recommend using the SU-8 if you want to do a lot of damage. Uh, but if, if you want to, still play the M44. It does have that wide arc of fire. You can still damage the enemy and, be, and get the medals, as Zinn has proved. But overall, I would say the SU-8 is better if you have a mission to complete and to do a, a lot of damage and do a lot of stun i go with the SU-8 instead of the M44. So there you have it. Uh, basically, I think Wargaming have ruined the M44 from my perspective because I used to play this RT quite a lot when, of course, I do play, and I don't play that often because I'm mostly doing videos. But as since proved, you can actually earn uh, enough to make the M44 work. He did get a first class. I would have liked it if he'd actually got an ace tanker as well as the Confederate. That would prove that, yes, he is still capable. But, of course, an ace tanker would just show that he was in the 99th percentile of all those people playing the M44 during that period. And uh, so I think we'll have to see uh, if we get a lot of ace tankers with medals from the M44. I doubt you're going to see any Gauss medals from it. Um, but Zinn's certainly a very good player, so he knows he can probably get an ace tanker. It just might take him a while to do it, whereas with the SU-8, he'll probably get an ace tanker fairly quickly because, obviously, it'll still be doing a lot of damage, and uh, people probably won't have switched over to the SU-8 from the M44 yet, so he'll be in the top scorers if he does. Well, that's my view. Um, I've had my gripe. I, I still think that Wargaming don't deserve any money from us at all because they keep nerfing Artie to suit the whims of the idiots who can't play the game with Artie in it. And they must realise by now that Artie does have a significant um, game to play in these battles uh, as it does in real life. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do, sub like, do subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.